Hi guys, it's Jenny Belly. I'm here with a requested video from Bon Bon Scraps who wanted to know what are my must have art journaling supplies and Brit Chick and I wanted to know what my um, best markers, paints, inks etc are. So this video, or actually it's going to be two videos, I recorded it last night and it was quite long so it'll probably be split into two, is just going to be on artist media. So wet, dry, chalky, oily, all the different kinds of media that you want to use in your journals, excluding materials like adhesives, stamps, stencils. Um, originally, I was a little reluctant to do this video um, because there are so many of these videos online and I didn't just want to duplicate information. But um, when it was requested, I decided I wanted to do it because what I really want to do is... Um, a video is to have to save money on your art journaling materials. I am by no means um, uh, tight with money when it comes to art journaling materials, but I'm not extravagant either. I don't buy clothes and I don't buy shoes and I don't buy anything really. The only vice that I have is my art materials. So, um, like I say, I do have quite a lot, but it's taken me a while to build up um, everything that I have and at the same time I don't ever buy anything full price I will always get something cut price and I just want to pass on that information as to how to shop for particular materials really and also um, just discuss buying things um, consistently for you to develop rather than buying a whole load of materials and just being overwhelmed by it. It's a lot better for you to, and economical for you to pick one material, figure out how you use that, go out, get another, figure out how those two incorporate each other into your art journals. Um, but also, I'm going to be talking about all this stuff, but you don't need all of this stuff. Um, somebody left me a comment a few months ago on one of my flips saying oh this will be great um, to do but I can't do it yet because I've only got crayons and watercolour or something and it broke my heart a little bit because you don't need all of this stuff to art journal I mean Kurt Cobain only used a ballpoint pen in his journals and um, Queen Victoria used pencil from watercolour <laughs> I'm thinking of somebody else Leonardo da Vinci only used ink so you do not need all of this stuff. I understand that art journals are about testing materials and testing techniques, but they are also a journal and they are also about getting your expression down on the page. So use what you have. Don't wait to have a load of stuff because when you have a load of stuff, you're not going to have the techniques to go with it. You know, you need to develop steadily and slowly and figure out how things work for you. Because people can teach you techniques. I'm not going to, this isn't a technical video. I'm not going to show you technically how to use these materials. Because people can show them, um, but it's going to be you down on your table working in your art journal that figures out how it's going to work for you in your art journals and how you're going to develop your own style. So while I, I'm talking about all of this stuff, you don't need all of this stuff at all and forgive me if I talk to you like you're ignorant of a lot of these materials if you're uh, an advanced art journaler it's just easier for me to go across all levels by starting at the beginning so we are going to be starting at the beginning and it's going to be the boring stuff leading into the more fun stuff um, but I hope you get something out of it just as a final note these are all the videos that I'm currently doing these are all the how to's these are the ongoing videos and then these are the requested videos. So if you've requested a video, um, I will be on it, but what I'm trying to do is upload videos in um, a reasonable kind of order, a sensible kind of order chronologically. So uh, ice cream 8888888888 requested how to um, organise recycled art materials, which isn't media, it's um, wood, it's metal, it's things for mixed media. And so what I will do in that video is also incorporate how you can collect these materials because they're all around you and they are free as well as eco-friendly. So 
that will be a video I'm doing at some point in the future but and it was requested before this one but like I say I'm trying to do it in a chronological kind of order so bear with me and um, I will see you later <laughs> So my number one product for art journaling would be gesso. Now it's quite a boring thing to have and to have to spend your money on, but I would recommend it because you will find more uses for gesso than what you initially think before you buy it. Some people will say use white acrylic paint instead, and to a certain degree I will use gesso in place of white acrylic, um, where I would be able to just use white acrylic, but I wouldn't do it in reverse. Where I need gesso I wouldn't use white acrylic paint. Because what you can do with it, for example, this is my junk mail box. Just things that come through the post, like this. Magazines and, and leaflets that come through the post. You can create an art journal like this out of it. This is just a leaflet that I mixed uh, pink acrylic paint in with some gesso and created some really thick pages that I could then collage onto um, that will then have some groove to it to be able to do what I want so even before you go out and buy a snazzy expensive art journal I would suggest getting some gesso because then you can turn anything you have into um, a journal now I will in the other video talk about how to save money on gesso and where to buy it but for now throughout all of these I'm just going to tell you um, the products and what they are what they are good for so the first Thing I would say you would need in your arsenal for an art, art journalers kit is definitely gesso. Acrylic paints can be a little bit of a minefield for people that don't have any paints and don't know what to buy. Um, but the merits of them are pretty obvious, particularly if you already art journal. You can do anything with acrylic paints. There is a million and one techniques that you can do with acrylic paints. And they are pretty much the staple paint that you will use in an art journal. Um, so what I'll probably talk about is the quality of paint and picking paints. So what I have here is just some of my paints. Now obviously you don't need all of this. <laughs> you don't need all of this uh, to start. What you could do if you wanted to is just buy a red, a yellow and a blue, a white and a black and mix your own. And I'll talk more about that in the money saving video. Um, but on these ones all I have is some cheap £1 acrylic paints. You can get these from any craft stores. And what I do is I just put a bit of colour on the top just to identify from the top of this box what I have. Now I know some artists that will only use these craft paints because they swear by them, they think they're fine quality for a pound or a dollar, two dollars, whatever they might be. And I know others that will only use more expensive um, craft paints. If you're new, I would, uh, acrylic paint, sorry. If you're new, what I would say is get some of these craft paints to start off with and figure out the techniques with these because they do the same job. They're just not as heavy bodied. They're not high pigmented. They're a lot more runny. But they are still um, pretty good paints for an art journal. So I have these and sometimes I will just use these on not even just a page but on some of my actual artwork I won't care I'm not a, a, an acrylic snob by any means I have some more expensive paints but I'm perfectly happy using these paints multi-purpose and then what I have here is just some studio paints so a little bit more expensive to be honest I'm not completely infused by them these ones are gloss so that might be why is they've got a glossy kind of semi-gloss so that might be why, because I put them down and they're a little bit more translucent than, say, a paint that I would expect for the price that these cost. But that's because they're glossy. So on some items, I might use them. I haven't used them that much, which is probably why I'm, I'm not fussed with them as yet. As I said, you have to pick something and then make it work for you, see how you want to use it. So that's something I need to learn with these ones. 
Now these are acrylic paints that I have. Um, I have some of these more um, expensive artist paints, these more high pigmented artist paints. These artist paints are more um, more paint for your money and these are more pigment for your money. So y you kind of have a trade-off between quantity and quality sometimes. But again, these to me are still pretty good quality paints. What these are is some little craft paints that I bought from um, a hardware store about 10 years ago. And these are as cheap as the larger bottles. And they are still, can you hear, they're still fine liquid. They are still absolutely perfect for use. And they are very old paints. I got them when I was a teenager. These ones came in a kit out of one of those stores that have kind of craft section. And... Um, it's kind of like a system, painting system that it came in. I threw the rest away, but these are actually really good paints. They're quite thick, if you can see that. And what these thick paints are really good for is um, stenciling, getting a stippling brush like this and stippling through a stencil. I have some particular stencil paint here. And to be honest, it's about the same consistency and that is actually a lot more um, denser in colour than what these ones are. I might actually want to do a couple of coats with this one. Um, and then these ones are ones that I mix up myself, which again I'll talk to you about in that money saving video. Also you've got the um, Ranger kind of brands which have the dabbers which I quite like. Definitely for ease of use. Um, and I think that's it for this box. What I do want to show you is these rags which are just one technique that you can use with acrylic paint is paint it on, lift it off with a wet wipe kind of thing. These are facial wipes that I use for this job. And these ones here are made with paints that are a little bit cheaper. So as you can see they're still quite, I mean this one particularly is very soft and it's, it's fluffy, it's still a wet wipe kind of uh, feel except dry. And these ones are with more highly um, highly pigmented, denser, thicker kind of uh, acrylic paints and as you can see these are a lot tougher um, and a lot crinkled so you can tell, it's just like a demonstration, the different um, kind of pigment that goes into and the texture that goes into the paints. The cheaper paints tend to be thinner, the more expensive ones are thicker and have got a lot more colour to them. Now if you do this technique don't throw these away. Keep them, dry them out, and look at these cool patterns that you get on here. Kind of like a tie-dye effect. And what you can do is just scrunch them up, lift off paint like that, and as you roll it out you get this kind of tie-dye thing. Now you can keep these, sew them together, turn them into a book, cut them up, put them on a collage. Don't throw these away, <laughs> basically. So on to the next one, um, which is about translucent paint on your page watercolour. <laughs> Watercolour is a really, some people find watercolours easier to use than acrylic and other people find them more difficult to use. Um, I happen to use them interchangeably. I wouldn't say I'm a master of either of them, but the only way that you're going to get better at using either is by using either, you know. So I try and use both as I can. I don't use the really expensive kind. These are the student grade Winsor & Newton but they are extremely good quality paints even for student grade. If you don't want to go for something that will put pigment down on the, on the actual page, you're happy with acrylic paint, then something you might want to go for is shimmery watercolours. And these are twinkling H2Os and they are basically um, a water soluble mica powder basically uh, but a watercolour 
paint with some colour in it as well. Now, against the H2O's, what I actually prefer is this brand called Imagination Craft, and particularly this season's wheel because the colours are really vibrant in this wheel. I have a vintage wheel which is a little bit duller, a little bit more grungy kind of colour. Um, but these ones are really, really vibrant colour in them, not just shimmer, but colour. So even if you don't go for the um, actual watercolours to use, you might want to go for something that will add a little bit of shimmer. If that's what you're after on your page, you might not be as shimmery as me, so it might not matter to you. In my um, travel journal kit, what I have is this original little watercolour set. Now you can get these really, really cheaply. These probably cost about five or six pounds now. Um, you just have to make sure you shop around for the half price sales and kind of things. But I see them around for that price all the time. Check eBay, check everywhere like that. And this was originally the set that I had before I went and, and bought this. And now this fits perfectly in my water in my travel kit. So maybe if you want to start out with watercolor, but you don't feel very bold about it get one of these and then look up some watercolour videos on YouTube to how to use them, how to mix the colours and all of that kind of thing. Um, one of the main things that you will see around with art journalers are the water soluble wax pastels or well, they tend to people call them wax crayons but on the thing they do say pastels I recommend if you want to buy uh, water soluble pen pastels, wax pastels um, and if you don't have any, just to get this smaller set, again I'll talk about how to save money um, with these particular items in the other video that I'm going to do. But for now, um, they're a good stable for getting colour down on your, paint, on your page and uh, figuring out how to use water-soluble items. Then also, one of my favourite things is the DeWin Intense box. And I don't work for DeWent, I'm going to tell you now, but I love their products. I love everything about DeWent products. Now, as you can see, they're fairly well used, and what I will tend to do is the broken in half ones, the ones probably used most often, and the half that is not as manky, I will use directly onto the page, and then the ones that are a little bit more nasty, I guess, are the ones I will put down on the work surface, get a brush and just put the paint, the water directly into it to make paint, to paint onto the page. So, bullet to page and then brush to page, basically. And the main thing that you need to understand with these is their strength might also be their weakness for other people, is because when you put these down, you will find, figure out that they work very fast, they dry very fast in where you place them. They're not like the water soluble wax pastels where if you have a little bit too much colour over here and you want to kind of dilute it down, adding more water will not work with these. Once they are down, they are down fast. But that is a really good thing to play with and to learn because what will happen is then you can then take, pick another colour and layer that onto it and the colour underneath will not budge. So they're a really, really good material to play around with and to figure out how to work in with the other water solubles, maybe. Um, but you have to bear that in mind when you get them, is you put it down, <laughs> and I go to get another brush or something, and that colour is then there, it's not going to move. So, for, uh, going on from the Intense Blocks, what I then have is Intense Pencils. And the reason why they are like this is I bought a DeWent set, um, which had not only the ink tense pencils, but also the watercolour pencils. 
Now these are fairly new because, um, well they haven't been used very much because they're new, I've only just bought them. Um, and again, they are the most vibrant, richest, most beautiful colour, but again, they stay fast when you put them down. But I would recommend um, buying the pencils maybe before the blocks, doing the other way around to what I did, because you can get more, you can obviously use the flat of the pencil to get a lot of colour down, and you can obviously take a brush directly to the pencil lead, but you can also then obviously get very tighter marks and stuff like that whereas the blocks they unless you use it with a brush for intricate design they aren't going to be as um, accurate as what the pencils are so if you want something that is multi-purpose for accuracy and for a lot of um, colouring then get the pencils first and if you may find you may use them for more of a background thing than you want to buy the blocks but I wish I'd have bought them the other way around which is why I've just told you about that the watercolours again, pretty much new. Um, I've not really used them very much. What I have under here is um, a set of, I think, are they called Stadler? The um, German brand. And they're fairly good, but again, I've not really used these because I'm not really gelled to them very much. What I do use in terms of pencils very much is what is in this pencil roll here. And what is in this pencil roll is all Dewent pencils. <laughs> so I'm again, I don't work for them, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make any bones about it. I love Dewent pencils. Okay, so these are the Color Soft brand, and they are very beautiful pencils to work with. They are super soft, but they also, when you put some water with them, become like the intense, a bit more vibrant. Um. What these ones are is the metallic. Again, they're just an ordinary pencil. You can use them as an ordinary pencil. But then as soon as you hit them with a bit of water, they become shimmery. Or metallic -y, not so much shimmery. Now, these ones are beautiful. They are the graffitin. And what they are is they are colour, but they are kind of still got a graphite kind of look. If you like grungy, these are the pencils to go for. They are really grungy colours. So when you've got them in... Um, let me see if the actual leaflet in the ink tent shows you the kind of things that you can achieve with them. The graphite tint here. They are vibrant, yet dark, yet... I, I can't really describe them. They are stunning, stunning, stunning pencils. Do went, do went, do went, do went. <laughs> okay, I have shown you some other brands just to give you a bit of an idea, but do went are my favourite. And then just some do went watercolour pencils in um, some... Um, skin tone kind of colours. Okay, so the final uh, water soluble I want to show you is it, it happens to be Dewent again, but I don't know about other water soluble um, pencils. But I would recommend buying a water soluble graphite pencil. If you want to find what you can do with it, please have a look at my horrid journal flip because there's a few pages in there where I have used this pencil non-stop. I love this pencil. And later on I'll show you how I got this pencil and got it quite cheaply in this video, not in another video. But I'll show you that later on. So... pastels can be a really fun um, addition to your journaling kit. It is an easy, um, quick background material to use. If you want to use it for precision and foreground and mastering um, oils, it's a little bit more difficult, obviously. But as far as colour goes, they are pretty good um, to get down texture, colour, merging colours. Um, I've got three different price bands really here. I've got super cheap, cheap, and expensive. So let me just show you. This is the cheapest one. And obviously, if you just want to do this, 
then these ones are fine um, for this. But these cost me a couple of pounds and they're the metallic kind. But the first time I used them, look what happened on this one. <laughs> it just broke. It broke clean off in half. Um, and an oil pastel really should be soft. It shouldn't be this hard kind of texture. Um, and for me, I will from now on always spend money on my oil pastels because of what I use them for. But if you are just interested in using a different kind of media, then this kit, which was about £5, I think, um, which is about 7 or $8, gives you a range of colour to try out, and you can still try different techniques with this. It gives you some um, skin colour tones, in case you want to try portraits, some landscape colours, in case you want to do landscape, and just obviously any colours you want to use in your art journal. They are still very hard, um, I'm not going to lie. Now, I've bought expensive... Um, oil pastels. I personally will never go back to cheap pastels, but um, I'm not going to, you know, scoff at for people who want to try out. It's always better to um, pick something and and see if you like it before investing a whole load of money in it. But at the same time, these two here are like a different material. Now, this brand I went on about a bit in my um, horrid journal slip, Snellia. I don't quite know how you say it, but this brand, which is favoured or famous for being favoured by Picasso, they are beautiful. I love them, and I've already gone on about them in that flip. But let me just show you the difference. It, I mean, look, it's already come off on my hand just taking it out there. If I tried that with one of these, I just wouldn't get any colour. Oh, I did, but typical. <laughs> But they are just super, super soft and super creamy. They are just absolutely, they melt into the page, into each other, into your fingers. They are just super beautiful oil pastels. And they just make working with a pleasure. It is an oil, um, but in a stick form that makes oils easy for me to use. I can't use oil paints um, in an art journal because... They just, the way I use them are too thick and it just takes too long to dry. But these oil pastels, they are just really beautiful colours. They merge, they're just stunning. I'm, I can't say anything bad about these pastels. So if you do want to try um, maybe some actual drawing or creating pictures with pastels, I would recommend spending a little bit of money and getting a decent set. If you're just wanting to play around with background, just create swirls and, and circles and things just as a background layer, then these are absolutely fine. Um, what you will need with um, particularly the ones that have a lot of oil in them is you'll need a fixative to make sure that the pages, um, that the colour doesn't rub off one of the pages and the picture stays fast. But what I tend to use in my art journals is just a heavy, hold bodied um, hairspray. So I really like using oil pastels. I know not too many people do use them in their art journals. Um, but I would recommend them as a fun media to, to get into. The next one is where I started before oil pastels. And I now far prefer oil pastels. But I still do use the next one, which is pastels, a little bit in the journals. So let's go on to pastels. <laughs> Okay, pastels again, like everything else, have um, a variety of price points and, and materials that you could go for. Here's an example um, of what I have. The inscribed pastels are the cheap pastels that school kids get. <laughs> Basically, I remember having these at school. But for £5 or something like that, I managed to get um, this set, which has a ton of colours. Come on. Um, a ton of colours which if you go for the half stick 
size um, if you go for these half stick size you can get twice as much colour rather than this is a full stick length and these are the half stick so you can get a variety of colours just to see if you like pastels with them now the cheaper you go the more chalky they're going to be and less pigmented the higher price you go the less chalk you're going to have on it and the more you can blend them without all of the colour coming off now I don't use these very often I have to admit I've only done one or two full pictures in pastels what I use pastels for now is for highlighting for layering for um, having highlights like distress around the edges kind of thing and just mixing my media I tend to um, when I'm in a layering mood I tend to just mix everything and anything that I can now my preferred choice of um, pastels is definitely pan pastels because as everybody that you might have seen raving about them they are just a higher grade quality obviously you have to pay for it They're, the price of one of these is the same as a full set of this but they are super creamy super fine and although they're still a chalk pastel they don't have a lot of the chalk um, mess and waste that you get now what they come with is um, applicator tools, brushes, uh, makeup sponges basically and what you can get is full colour with these where it's kind of a translucent, definite, a pa definitely it looks a pastel effect. It's very light and translucent but you can layer and merge these, these pan pastels very easily. See out of doing that, that's all the chalk that I have on it, I hope you can see. And I do enjoy using these, but at the same time they're not as easy to use as maybe you might find um, a stick, because you can just pick up a stick and draw with it. This one you will need to use tools, and I have some tools here that I use with my pan pastels. But um, you don't need to go out and buy you know, a full set of applicator tools, because they do come in the, in the bottom with kind of like a little makeup eyeshadow little brush. Um, so they're not as precise maybe as this edge that you can get on here you can get a fine fine point you're not going to be able to achieve that with the pan pastels um, unless you're extremely extremely clever with that eyeshadow tool but they are still my preferred choice definitely for a full full of kind of background effect now what you can also have if you hate all of this chalk no matter how little it is getting on you um, you can obviously buy them in a stick form and um, I do quite like these because I don't ever find any it might be because they do end but um, I don't ever find any chalk coming off with these you can still blend them but there is absolutely no chalk and they're still very yummy a very yummy material they kind of the only thing you're going to get is a bit of colour on your fingers but not a lot in comparison to to what you're doing so there's a few choices of pastels and again what you will need with them is a fixative slash hairspray <laughs>